David. It's a pleasure to have you on our program. It's a pleasure to be here. I wanted to speak to you first, I guess, on this motion of, for Islamophobia, condemning Islamophobia. I think a lot of people were shocked about it. Tell us a bit more about this motion and what it represents. Uh, well, the good news is that it doesn't have force of law. It does not directly threaten free speech now, not yet. That's the good news. The bad news is that it's a uh, major step forward towards um, uh, criminalizing event, not, criminalizing is perhaps too strong a word, but repressing free speech against Islam. It, it doesn't repress it now, but it's a step in that direction. And uh, so criticism of Islam is going to get more and more difficult. Also, this is not the first such motion. Uh, there were two previous to it, one in the Quebec National Assembly in 2015, I believe, and it was unanimous, uh, and another in the Canadian Parliament last year, and then this one, uh, which passed, I believe it was only a week ago approximately, in late March, we're now April 2nd, um, and uh, it's basically a victory for radical political Islam because it sends a message that if you criticize Islam somebody might accuse you of Islamophobia and Islamophobia has been condemned by the Canadian Parliament and there may be negative repercussions maybe not immediately if they've done this now then what's to prevent them from passing something stronger with more effect in the future it's basically a step towards a new blasphemy law. Canada already has a blasphemy law, which we're trying to get rid of. It's uh, Article 296, I believe, in the Criminal Code. It hasn't been used in decades. Uh, but if a new one is passed as a, as a future you know, outgrowth of this motion on Islamophobia, it could very well be worse than the existing blasphemy law because it talks about Islam in particular, therefore it gives a privilege to a particular religion which could cause interreligious conflict. And also we can be sure that there'll be uh, lots of fanatical Islamists who, are, who, are, who make sure it's enforced, whereas the current blasphemy law is, 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 hasn't been enforced in ages. So it's very troubling. What do you say to people who say, well, this is a way of stopping terrorism, especially with the awful, you know, tragic attack on a mosque recently? Well, it has nothing to do with that attack on the mosque other than the fact that people are using mass murder, uh, they're exploiting that mass murder as an excuse to pass this motion. That, uh, what happened in uh, Quebec City was an attack on people, on Muslims. Uh, to Islamophobia, the word means fear of Islam. It's perfectly reasonable to be afraid of Islam, especially its political, radical, fundamentalist variant. I'm afraid of radical Christianity. I mean, there are radical Christians who murder abortion doctors or pass anti-gay legislation or, you know, the fundamentalists of all religions are, are dangerous. And uh, f furthermore, it, it's not going to uh, make things better. It's going to make things worse because everybody you know, who thinks clearly can see that this is unfair, it's going to make it uh, difficult for people to, to, to express their fears of terrorism, uh, of fears of Islamist terrorism, and, and which is going to uh, make the uh, social climate even worse, you know, and we, I think it's, if, if it does anything, it'll increase the probability of some kind of, uh, 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 of acts of violence, acts of hatred, uh, could probably increase as a result of this unfair motion. What about the Canadian blasphemy law? What's, when was the last time uh, it was used and what are the hopes of it being rid of, gotten rid of? Well, um, the last time was, uh, I, I'm not sure of the date, I think it was in the, it was ha over half a century ago, a long time ago. Um, and uh, there was a petition uh, started by a couple of organizations, a petition to, um, to abolish this uh, last new law. Our organization supported it, uh, the, this move. And the federal government under the new prime minister, uh, Justin Trudeau, 
gave some indication that it might remove it as it was cleaning up the criminal code in various ways. The last I've heard, although, is that uh, they've decided not to change it, but I'm, I haven't heard anything definite. You talk about multiculturalism as an ideology, and, and in a sense, all of that feeds into this Islamophobia motion and all of that. Oh, oh yes, it's all much, uh, very much uh, of a piece. Uh, multiculturalism, what it means literally, is just cultural diversity. That's what it used to mean in the good old days, but now it, it basically means uh, it means cultural relativism, it means that uh, the person's ethno-religious identity is more important than their citizenship, it means that people are labeled by, their, by the community in which they're born and raised so that Muslims get the Muslim label stuck on them, that's what multiculturalism means. And this, uh, this empowers fundamentalists of every religion. If, if, if religious identity becomes so important, then that empowers those who are most pious, most fundamentalist. Um, and so uh, multicultural, multiculturalism plays very much into the hands of the Islamists. And it makes it harder for, for Muslim dissenters to express themselves and to, uh, to escape that identity. It makes it harder to, to uh, change religion, for example, or to become an atheist. If a, if a Muslim wants to, to leave Islam, I mean, it's already difficult enough, especially in Islam, where, where apostasy is, uh, is considered to be a horrible sin and in many countries a crime. Now, I mean, it's not a crime in Canada, but uh, you know, if, if, if the label is stuck on people, it's harder for them to get rid of it. And Canada has a multiculturalism act. So I, I call it an ideology because it's, it's, it's in law, it's a mentality. Uh, which uh, essentializes religion, and religion is not essential. Religion is or should be a choice. You can change religion. You can't change your race. Uh, you can't uh, you can't change your sexual orientation very easily. Uh, you know, you can't change your age except to grow older. Uh, so, but you can change your religion. So, religion is not an essential trait, and so it shouldn't be essentialized by by identifying people by that label all the time. You talk about the sort of persecution of atheists. Uh, yes. You spoke about it at the uh, conference in Poland. Uh, do you think this sort of multiculturalism and Islamophobia feed into a situation where it's easier to persecute atheists? Well, indirectly, yes. It, it doesn't have a... Well, I would say the effect would be direct within religious communities. It makes it harder for Muslims in particular to come out as atheists. That, that, that's true. For those of us who are not part of the Muslim community, it doesn't affect us directly, but uh, there is an indirect effect where uh, religious identity becomes very important and so not having a religion is seen as something not normal. It, it, it increases uh, atheophobia indirectly at least. And uh, I mean, al already uh, there's a mentality that everybody's got a religion, and uh, if you don't have one, then you know you should get one. There's a there's a uh, there's a course in the Quebec school system called Ethics and Religious Culture, and it's r obligatory. And the Quebec school system is supposed to be secular, but this this obligatory course is there, and it well. Just the title right off the bat is bad because it associates ethics with religion, as if you can't be an ethical person without religion. But it basically teaches that you know all children have a religious identity, and what is yours? And if you don't have one, there's something wrong with you. That's the mentality that's taught, and this is the mentality of multiculturalism, that uh, that you identify people not as citizens of of a country with you know what we have in common is our citizenship and our belonging to this country and making democratic decisions. No, you're a Muslim and you're a Christian and you're a Jew and you're something else and you're a, you know, an, a member of a particular native uh, religion from uh, First Nations people. Or, and, and by identifying people with their religion, uh, it's, uh, it divides and uh, it, it weakens the social fabric. It divides people. And uh, it's uh, those who promote multiculturalism claim it claim that it's a solution for racism, but it's not. It's more like a form of uh, light racism itself.
just as a final question, you know, the idea that morality comes from religion, you talked about that at the conference as well. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, so we certainly have to, as atheists and secularists, we have to fight this idea that somehow you need to have a religion to be a moral person. Because, uh, I mean, morality can't come from God because, well, so, for so many reasons, but the, I mean, Plato wrote it down, attributing it to Socrates uh, 2,500 years ago, where, you know, if, if, um, if you do something because God said it, would it be good even if God hadn't commanded it? Or, you know, is, is something good only because God commands it? In that case, uh, for example, if uh, anyway, Jehovah commands Abraham to kill his son, that means killing your son is moral. Uh, this is where theistic morality goes to. That's where it leads, so that's kind of an absurd situation. So uh, we make decisions about morality independent of what the sacred scriptures say. And, and, and as a matter of fact, we judge the scriptures and we say, oh, well, that, you know, killing the Canaanites in the Bible is not a good thing. We, we, morality exists independent of, uh, independent of religious beliefs. And so atheists uh, can be just as moral, in fact, more moral, uh, because, uh, because the theistic morality is a corruption of morality. Uh, and, uh, for example, there are some people who say, you can be good without God. This is not the way to say it. You should say, if you're a religious believer, you can be good in spite of that, but it would be easier if you'd stop believing in that nonsense. It would be easier for you to be a good person. You, in other words, you can be good with God, but it's better not to have one. Thank you very much. Okay.